All right, so we're going to go over some parts of uh, this worksheet here, worksheet uh, number one. Um, I'm going to blast through problem one really, problem actually three really quick. The bar graphs we've gone over in class, um, and once I get these solutions written up, you can double check those. So, we, we don't really ever draw the bar graphs for a test or a quiz or anything like that uh, in this class. The bar graphs are to get our brain going to keep track of how energy is conserved, right? So number three is really more of what we would do. And in fact, once we get over to number uh, six, which hopefully in this video I'll, I'll show you the setup of it and you'll be able to carry it out. Once we get over to number six, we'll really see where we're going with all of this. Um, so number three, 0.25 kilogram toy car released at the top of a 0.5 meter high ramp. 20% of the total initial energy is converted to internal energy due to friction and air drag. And then I ask you all these individual parts. Determine the gravitational potential energy at the top of the ramp. Determine the internal energy at the top of the ramp. Or built up while sliding down the ramp. Determine the kinetic energy at the bottom of the ramp. Determine the speed of the car at the bottom of the ramp. Right? So really, I would simply ask you part D. Determine the speed of the car at the bottom of the ramp. Right? Parts A, B, C, they're just kind of guiding you through the process here. Um, usually what I would do is just set up one equation right from the beginning. But anyhow, we'll just, just for practice, UG, the top of the ramp, is MGH. So that's going to be 0 0.250 kilograms times, you can use 10, 10 newtons per kilogram times the height of 0 0.50 meters. So you've got half of 0 0.25 times 10. So that looks like it's going to be about 1.25 joules. So UG at the top is 1.25 joules. Probably should only make it two sig figs, you know? 1.3 is probably what I should really do here. Um, internal energy built up down the ramp, it's going to be 0 0.20 times 1.25 joules. 20% of that initial gravitational energy. So that looks like it's going to be about 0. 5 joules. Right? About 20% of that. So 2 and then 5 by 10. Alright, so if that's how much internal energy is built up, kinetic energy at the bottom, alright, it's going to be the UG at the top minus the internal energy built up. Right? And one way you can really think of this actually. Um, the overall conservation of energy here for this problem is the P is the period right before us I'm doing energy and I gotta call it PEG in there. You know? So in here I gotta call it UG. Kind of kind of nice. UG at the top equals the K at the bottom plus the U internal at the bottom. Right? So that's the conservation of energy for this. Alright, so I know this is 0.25, I know this is 1.25, therefore the kinetic energy at the bottom is 1.0 joules. 1.0 joules, say 1.00, I'm being sloppy with sig figs. So then we take that, set that equal to 1 half mg squared, 0 0.250 kilograms times u squared. And it looks like we're going to get 2 meters per second. Does that look right? 2 times 1 is 2. Divided by 2.25, that looks like it be about 4. Square root of 4. The final speed at the bottom is about 2.0 meters per second. Basic conservation of energy. You with me so far? Is it? Did I do it wrong? Did you get it? Oh, so you got what I what I do wrong? Oh no, I did 
Ini dua orang je lah. Yeah, I did do it wrong. That should be um, the square root of 8. My bad. Oh. Your number's not right either, but I also did it wrong. Yeah, 2.8. 2 .8. Can I try that, Cody? Yes. Alright, 2.8 meters per second. Michael, you agree? Yes. My bad. Alright. I bet you Michael got it wrong. Yeah, uh, Alright, so.